Hey everybody, it's Gio from Microsoft of Florida International University and in this video I'm here with Archam from University of Georgia and today is January 6, 2014. It's also 12.23 a.m. so it's a little past midnight and in this video we're going to show you the drag and drop behavior. So the drag and drop behavior um, pretty much does some cool stuff but I'm going to have Arsham explain it. So, yeah, uh, so drag and drop actually is a really cool behavior. So it enables the object to be dragged and dropped uh, wherever you want on on the page. Uh, so it also has two cool properties. So you have an access property, which will en enable you to limit the movement of the object. So for example, if you wanted to uh, move it vertically or horizontally or limit it to either one. Uh, also has initial state, which is one of its properties. So you can have it initially enabled, or you can enable it at some point with some event on runtime when your game is running, and something happens, and you can enable drag and drop. So, for example, in this example, when uh, when something happens, you can enable uh, moving uh, enable the user to uh, move an object, for example, a bomb in this case, to put it on uh, on the page, uh, which is pretty cool thing, and you can do a lot. Are you there? Yes. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> I think your mic cut out for a second. It's it's all good all though. Right. So, um, awesome. I, I think I got the gist of what you were saying. And it pretty much has a lot of cool properties. You can use it in a lot of ways, and they can be triggered without you actually having to do anything. Uh, in some instances, um, is that is that kind of what you were saying? Yeah, I was saying that there are two properties uh, uh, that uh, dra drag and drop has. One of them was uh, access, which you can limit the movement uh, vertically or horizontally, however you want the, the user to be able to move the object. Oh, awesome. And there's also uh, the initial state, which is also one of the properties of drag and drop, uh, which uh, it can be initially enabled or disabled, or based on something that happens in the game, you can enable it on runtime. Wait, so you're telling me that I can drag like horizontally or vertically i don't have to do it in a specific like i i can control where it's dragged or dropped uh you can control how it's dragged or dropped oh that's that's awesome and i i didn't even know that so that's that's uh more knowledge and power for me as a developer that's perfect um great um so now we're going to implement this on uh this map we've been working on for the past few behavior videos and uh we have a bomb explosion and we have a bomb on the screen and as you can imagine we're going to make this bomb a drag and drop so it's going to act kind of like a nuke so when we let go of it it's going to blow up and kill all the enemies around it and hopefully save our life so um i set up some more stuff on the event sheet with arsham over here and i'm going to add the drag and drop behavior to this bomb so we know how to add behaviors by this by this time. Um, I'm sure we you know clearly know how to add a behavior at this point in time. So uh, we just added the drag and drop, and now we're going to take it over to the event sheet, and um, we just need to set the conditions to do what we need. So this is actually where it's supposed to go, and that's because we actually implemented it to make sure it was working before this video, because we don't want what happened last video. Uh, to happen again where some bug happens. <laughs> uh, okay, so the on drop uh, property is what we're going to use to trigger this event. So what's going to happen is we drop the bomb. Um, well, we drag the we drag the bomb. We don't check that though, and then we drop it, and then it's going to destroy the bomb, and it's also going to spawn an explosion on top of the bomb. Now, generally, when you destroy an object and construct, it's very important to spawn stuff before you destroy it so if you're going to create anything make sure you do it before you destroy it um it would you would agree with that right arsham like yeah for example if you want to blow something up probably you want to show uh, some flames or some sort of explosion that shows up and then then you destroy the other object that for example in, in a bomb when the bomb explodes in real life right uh the bomb explodes so you destroy the bomb and then you probably show some flames that going off that you know something exploded so that will look more realistic yeah i mean on top of that i think in construct if you destroy the object first the reference to spawn it gets lost so you won't be able to spawn right. anything because it won't exactly. know where it's spawning from um so that's you know that's another important thing to consider but let's try it and see if it works which it should um so i'm going to click this bomb drag it and drop it oh sweet and it just worked and destroyed all the enemies and we're happy campers because we're still alive. Well, for not for long, but yeah. Um, so it worked. 
Um, I hope to see you guys in the next video. Have a great day and uh, talk to you later. Talk to you later, guys. Bye.